Okay, so in this problem, we're told Mary and Sally are in a foot race. When Mary is 22 meters from the finish line, she has a speed of 4 meters per second and is 5 meters behind Sally, who has a speed of 5 meters per second. Sally thinks she has an easy win, and so, during the remaining portion of the race, decelerates at a constant rate of 0.5 meters per second to the finish line. What constant acceleration does Mary now need during the remaining portion of the race if she wishes to cross the finish line side by side with Sally? Okay, so first thing, we got to draw what's going on here. So this right here is Mary. So just keep that in mind. This is Mary and this is Sally. So they tell us that when Sally or sorry, when Mary is 22 meters from the finish line, she's traveling with a velocity of four meters per second. And then she is five meters behind Sally. So the distance between the two is five meters uh, and Sally is going to be traveling five meters per second. Right. And then during the rest of the race, Sally's going to have an acceleration of or deceleration of 0.5 meters per second squared. Keep in mind, the negative just indicates that she's slowing down, basically accelerating in the opposite direction. Um, and then we also know what we're trying to find is the acceleration of Mary uh, in order to finish at the same time as uh, Sally. So how are we going to do this? So we're going to use kinematics to solve this. And first, we need to understand how to do it, though. So um, what we're going to do first is we're going to solve for the time it's going to take Sally to finish the race. And if we can get that time, then we basically have the time required that Mary needs to do the same, right? Because if it takes a different amount of time, they're not going to cross at the same, uh, right, at the same time. So their time to complete needs to be the same. So if we can find out what Sally's time to complete is, uh, we can basically use that information to solve for Mary's necessary acceleration. Okay, you'll see how it works going in in the problem, but uh, that's what we're going to do first. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to focus on how to find Sally's time required to finish. So the way we do that is we write down the given. So I like to write given. And then since we're dealing with kinematics, you basic, uh, basically are going to write out your main kinematic variables. So the main or the main five kinematic variables are delta x, which is basically your distance or how far you change position. Really, it's just change in position. Uh, and x basically just refers to this axis here. So the change in this axis here, basically uh, they're running where they're running. Uh, and then you have v sub zero, you have v, you have a, and you have t. So these are your five main kinematic variables. And I like to write them out like this. And then uh, what I do is I look at the problem and I know I need to recognize what I'm solving for and what information I'm given. So which of the variables I'm actually told. Uh, as I said before, we're solving for time. And so this basically sets our interval. So when you solve kinematics, you keep them in an interval. So uh, basically our interval is from here to there, since we're trying to find the time it takes for her to get to this finish line. Um, and then now we just want to find the other variables. So uh, as I said before, they tell us that her acceleration is minus 0.5 meters per second squared. As I said before, the negative just indicates that she's slowing down in the opposite direction. Because you generally denote right is positive, left is negative. So the negative just indicates she's slowing down. Um, and then delta x is going to be the change in her position. So what is her uh, the change in her position from here all the way to here? So we know that this whole distance is 22 meters. And we know Sally is five or yeah, Sally is five meters in front of Mary. So if this is 22 and then this is 5, this would just be 22 minus 5 or 17 meters. So she's 17 meters from the finish line, 5 meters ahead of Mary. So the change in the x is 17 meters. V sub 0 is the velocity at the, uh, at the beginning of the interval, the initial velocity. And if we look here, the velocity is just 5 meters per second. So we know her initial velocity is 5 meters per second. Uh, and then her velocity at the line, we don't know, but we can just ignore. So we're not going to use that. And so what you need is when you solve these, you need three kinematic variables, which we do have. And then you can use it to solve for the one you're missing or the one you want to find. So this is where it's useful to memorize your kinematic equations or to look them up on the Internet. Just type in kinematic equations uh, and you'll find them listed uh, because we're going to be using one of them to solve for it. So uh, the equation we're going to use is this one right here. Delta X equals V sub zero times T plus one half a t squared. Um, and so the reason we're using this one is because we have delta x, we have v sub zero, and we have a, meaning all we need to do is solve for t, 
And yeah, we just uh, will get what we're looking for, the time it takes uh, for her to finish. So plugging it in, 17 equals 5t plus, so it's going to be plus 1 half times minus 0.5 uh, t squared. So 17 equals 5t. 1 half times minus 0.5 is minus 0.25 t squared. Uh, you should know this isn't going to be in quadratic form. So moving these to the other side, you get 0.25 t squared minus 5t plus 17 equals 0. And so uh, now you can either use the quadratic equation to solve for this, or how I recommend it is just getting out your graphing calculator, uh, plugging this function into uh, into uh, your, your uh, calculator, your graphing calculator. And basically the quadratic formula just solves for when it equals zero. So that's all we're doing is looking on the graph when our function crosses zero. And so your notice is going to be two points, but we're only going to be taking one of them, which is the first one. Um, so when you solve this, you're going to get two values. One, I believe, is like 15 or something. And the other one is going to be about four. Let me look what it is. It's 4.34. 4 so you're going to get t equals 4.34 and then some other value. This is going to be the only value we use, though, because uh, there's two values. One value is this time it takes for her to get here and travel 17 meters. The other time is... Um, Basically, she's going to go like this, and then she's going to travel and stop and then come back. And that's what that time is. Because all this is is finding the change in her position in the x, um, right? And the reason that is is because acceleration, once she travels, she's going to keep slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and then she'll reach zero, and then she's going to start going this way again. And so that's why we're only using the first time value. And so uh, now that we have the time value, it takes uh, Sally to finish. Um, we need to find... Mary's acceleration. So we're going to do another given, but we're going to be focusing on Mary's interval. So from here all the way to here, right? Because we need the time it takes Mary to be the same as the time it takes Sally for them to cross at the same time. So you just want to write out your variables again. Let me go ahead and zoom out a bit. So we want to know her acceleration. So we can say a equals question mark since we need to find the acceleration for this to actually happen. Um, her time, once I get, once I said, or sorry, once again, is uh, the same. So 4.34, let me get a more exact value though, is 4.343, we'll say. So all I did was just get a more exact value. Um, and uh, yeah, so we have T, we have A. Her initial velocity, they tell us, is 4 meters per second. So at the beginning, she's traveling 4 meters per second. Uh, and then the change in distance for her to get to the end of the finish line is 22 meters. Right? They tell us she's 22 meters at this time. So 22 meters. Um, and then we don't need to know this. It's not necessary for the final velocity. And then, uh, yeah, so now what we want to do is solve for A, given these variables delta x, v sub 0, and t. So we're actually going to use the same equation again. So delta x equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half at squared. Um, and now it's just a matter of plugging in delta x, plugging in the initial velocity and t, and that'll give us the acceleration needed for this to actually happen. Um, so 22 equals 4 times 4.343 plus 1 half times a times 4.343 squared. All right, so let's solve. So moving this to the other side, four, three, uh, and then we have 22. So just keep in mind, I'm minusing it to the other side. So you're doing 22 minus four times 4.343. You'll get 4.628 equals, and then this goes away. So you have one half times A times 4.343 squared. So I'm just doing basic algebra here. So 4.343 squared divided by 2 is 9.431. 9 A. So 9.431, because we're solving for the A. Um, so you have 4.628. And then I'm going to use the exact value in my calculator, not the rounded one. 
but you're going to get A equals 0 0.4907. So about 0.49, which is basically 0.5 meters per second. Um, you can round however you'd like, though. Just keep in mind, some of my values were rounded, so it's, it might be a little different than yours, but it shouldn't make that much of a difference. But essentially, the acceleration is 0.49 meters per second squared. That's what's going to be uh, the constant acceleration required for uh, Mary to finish at the same time as Sally. So uh, yeah, so 0.49 meters per second squared. Uh, that's going to be your answer. And uh, hopefully you found this uh, video useful.